Hey everyone, this is Shepard with more Monster Hunter Try Ultimate Demo demonstrations. I'm just going to try out the Sword and Shield real quick against the Legambi. Maxella has given me a specific challenge and we'll see if I can complete it. So, I will mention what it is. Let's see if we can just kind of figure it out as the match goes on. So, there's a certain strategy that I used to always take in the arena. And I figured I should probably start adopting it in the demo as well. It kind of is uh, based around the idea that these fights don't take all that long. And yet the damage we inflict on the monster is well, the damage we inflict on the monster. So it may as well get as much in as quickly as possible. And so this is a good strategy to do if you ever have teammates in the arena. First thing you do, run right up on the monster, drop your bombs, detonate them and get the heck out of there. And it's particularly effective on Arcusis. He's weak to sonic sounds. So by doing this, we ended up making him stun for a little bit, allowing us to get off a little bit of an extra combo. Now, the Sword and Shield has been changed slightly since Monster Hunter Try. It's a lot easier to get the six-hit combo in, or the full XXX. AAA round slash combo, you no longer have to press plus at the end in order to do that last round slash. If you just continue to press A, it'll come out automatically. You may have noticed in the beginner's tutorial Christian and I are working on, it hasn't been released yet as far as I know, he uses a sword and shield. My advice to him was try to make sure as many of your attacks involve the sword as possible. Unless you're actually playing with a full team of other people, the shield bashes are only really effective for inflicting exhaust. Depending on the particular monster, sometimes you can get a KO off, and if you're with a full team, sometimes it's okay. But otherwise, the damage you get from the sword itself is multiplied than what damage you would normally get from a shield bash. Not only that, you don't get any elemental damage, and not that the elemental damage matters here, because, of course, ice against ice. But, you know, typically you'd be using either a fire sword or something with elemental on it. So things are going well so far. I mean, basically you're always just giving yourself like a full combo, waiting for him to get flinched in the middle of it. And if he isn't flinched, just roll away, reevaluate, and go in for another one. I don't feel committed. <laughs> you see there, you know, I didn't make myself do the full combo because I saw an attack was coming. Just roll out of the way. There's no rule saying what you have to do in terms of your combos each time. Mix it up so that, ideally, you're going to get the most hits off without getting any hits in yourself. The best part with him is he's got so many attacks that are slow and deliberate that he uses to attack in front of him. And have no real way to actually hurt you. The only way he can actually hurt you if you're kind of close to the side or behind him is rarely he'll fall backwards. Sometimes he'll do the full 360 spin around, which that can sometimes get you. And then lastly, he does like a little hop attack where he instantly move, maneuvers himself like 180 degrees. That's pretty much the most dangerous thing to get hit by if you're trying to not get hit at all. <laughs> if you haven't noticed yet, that's my goal. <laughs> And at this point, he's been hit in so many places, it's going to be, you know, consistently easier and easier to flinch him around. And that's the attack there that I was talking about that's kind of easy to get hit by. It doesn't really do any damage at all. And that's it. So just around four minutes or so. Not not bad. I think with a little practice you could probably easily get it under four minutes. Um, okay, so stay tuned. There will be another Plesioth video in just a moment.